There are a couple of things you should be doing to stay safe online, and in today's video, we're gonna be talking about six of those things. What's up, everybody? It's Adolf Skidler today. And due to popular demand, today we're gonna be talking about six things that you could actually do to pull a little Uno reverse card on hackers, all right? Look, if you're just new to the PC gaming scene or you just like computers in general, maybe you're a little bit of a hacker, you're just gonna wanna apply these six things to the way you use the internet on a regular basis. To start off, the first thing that you actually wanna do is if you are on Windows, and I know most of you probably are, because you like to play some computer games. Let's let's be honest here. You like it when your Steam works, right? I like it when my Steam works. But the first thing that you want to do, or at least it makes me feel a little bit safer if you are on Windows, is you're going to want to use a local account. And what a local account is, you know how whenever you have a Windows computer and you go to the lock screen every time you turn your computer on and you sign into your user account? Usually Microsoft likes to force you to attach that to an email, right? So that would just be Hotmail or whatever it is that Microsoft uses now. Your Windows account is probably registered under an email. Now what a local account does is it makes an account just on the machine, right? So it's not tethered to any sort of email and it's exactly what it says, it's local. Now the way you could do this is by going to Start, Settings, Accounts, select Family and Other Users, and next to add other user, you want to hit add account. You want to hit, I don't have this person sign in information. And then here you could actually select add a user without a Microsoft account. Now you just create your user and yeah, just use this user, right? Give it an admin perms, give it administrator permissions, whatever you want to do. It just makes me feel a little bit safer. And I don't know, I guess less violated by Microsoft whenever I have an account that isn't, you know, communicating with a, any sort of email at all. You know, I like my local accounts, right? Spoiler alert, if you're on Windows 11, it's even harder to do this, I think. <laughs> but now that you're actually on a local account, the second thing that you're going to want to do to make sure that no creepy hacker can get you right is you're gonna want to get yourself a VPN. Now what a VPN does is it actually routes out your internet connection to a different server before it reaches its destination. So whenever your internet connection goes from your router to the VPN server, it actually could change the IP address and it could mask your traffic. This will prevent people from obviously pulling your IP and potentially, I don't know, DDoSing you or something like that. Now if you're wondering, hey Veraxity, what a, what a, what a VPN should I get? The most secure thing to do for your traffic is to make your own VPN, but if you are going to go commercial with it, I do recommend stuff like Malvad, uh, you know, things that are are strict on no log policies if you're going for anonymity or privacy. Now that you got your VPN, the next thing we're going to be talking about is to be checking everything that you download. You don't necessarily need an antivirus anymore, all right? As long as you've got your head and uh, free will, you could be your own antivirus. Now, I'm not judging anyone here. We all, we all download shady things from time to time, all right? I'm not judging anyone here. It's not exactly a good idea to download random apps that you find online, especially if they're not signed and from a crazy domain of sorts. But if you do find yourself in the process of, say, nefariously obtaining something online and downloading programs that you probably shouldn't be, you're gonna wanna use a service like VirusTotal or Hybrid Analysis to actually scan that file before you ever run it on your main computer. Now these services like VirusTotal do actually a pretty good job of telling you what the file is, you know, what it does, what kind of malware is in it, uh, that stuff if you will, because it scans the file with a bunch of different antivirus engines, and it gives you sort of like a detection ratio, right? So you could scan your nefarious programs now and see if they're viruses. But if you want to take it a little bit of a step further, you could do thing number four on this list, which is to create a virtual machine. A virtual machine is basically a computer inside of a computer, put into super simple terms. It uses a hypervisor to emulate an operating system, right? Now you can choose Windows, Linux, Mac, whatever you really want to emulate, but the point being is it's a separate environment from your main computer. That way you could run all of your nefarious apps in this virtual machine first before you do anything on your main computer as you always should. You know, maybe the file that you're trying to access is a little bit too big for virus total. That's not completely uncommon. Now you can easily set up a virtual machine just by downloading virtual VirtualBox, it is completely free, and uh, once you're done downloading VirtualBox, you know, set that up, and then you have to download your virtual ISO file. You have to download the operating system you want to run, right? You can download Windows straight from Microsoft.com, or you could download Linux, like I said, whatever you want. So make sure you have a virtual environment set up if you're going to be using the computer a lot, or, you know, it's just a good thing to have if you have a computer in general. On top of creating a virtual machine, we have thing number five that you can do. And thing number five is to create a new online alias, right? Create a new user name. 
If you have any sort of government ID right attached to your username at all, if you have any sort of identification information, like if your name is in your username, your real name, God forbid, stuff like that people like to exploit. And now with the virtual machine that you installed, you want to create a new username and only use that username inside of the virtual machine. That way it's not connected to anything personal related to you. So whatever happens in the virtual machine that you have stays in the virtual machine, all right? Under a completely different identity. That way if you're ever in, I don't know, Discord or something, something like that, and somebody tries to dox you, or I don't know, someone's just being nefarious, they don't have anything on that username, right? They really can't get anything out of it. Even if they did get your IP, guess what? You got a VPN. So now that you're basically secured in every which way possible, the number six thing that you could do to actually secure yourself even further is to actually go on your virtual machine and dive into some viruses, right? Go try to find viruses online in your virtual machine. Scan them on Virus Total and see what they are, see what they do. You know, Virus Total is really good at telling you what these viruses do. Yeah, just poke around in your virtual machine and try to familiarize yourself with the way, you know, uh, most online scams work now. You know, there are a lot of scams out there. Some of them can even be pretty convincing, low key. I mean, there was this sponsorship opportunity someone sent me, and it was, it was, it looked legit, but whenever I went to download the, uh, they sent me a PDF file, right? It wasn't a PDF file, it was just an ES. That's how I knew something was okay. That person's trying to hack me, right? But yeah, number six is just to learn about and familiarize yourself with all the new scams that are going around. Now, I'm not saying scam anybody. I'm just saying, you know, bait the scammers. Maybe make like a honeypot account or something. And see what you get. Once you know the arsenal of weapons that hackers and scammers use, they become a lot less scary and you could actually defend against them pretty well. Now, a real good place to learn about all these malware strains and scams and stuff is actually my website, veracity.org. On veracity.org, Org, we have a community called VSEC, Veracity Security Academy, all right? By signing up to VSEC, you actually get access to 12 videos, all explaining, analyzing, and showing you how to defend against common cyber attacks like botnet DDoS attacks, rats, phishing attacks, all that sort of stuff. Now, there are many other scams out there that you could potentially fall for, some zero-day scammer activity, if you will. You're not going to encounter all of them while you're surfing on your virtual machine there looking for scammers, but whenever you do find a scam or a virus, you will know how to defend against it properly, the more you kind of try to pick them apart. By joining VSEC, it's actually our goal to help you understand how to use your computer the best that you can. There's a lot of pretty neat hacker stuff that you won't find anywhere else, I guarantee you that, hidden inside the VSEC course, so why don't you go check that out. And with that being said, everybody, that was actually six things that you could do to protect yourself online. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Uh, go follow me on my other social medias, hit up my Instagram, my Twitter, check out VSEC like I said, and uh, yeah, thanks for watching. I got some more videos coming shortly for you guys, and uh, yeah, stay tuned. Peace.